time I was eight, I had my first six pack of beer bought for me. And, um, you know, 11 is the first time I tried committing suicide. Shane Partridge is one of the key speakers at the Ignite the Life rally. He's sharing his story, and young people are listening. They're drawn to him, wanting to talk, wanting to share their own stories. Well, how long did it last? Oh, so I was 16. Many young people here are openly talking about how suicide has impacted their lives. We had a friend, her name is Tanisha, and she committed suicide. Like I lost a couple of my family members to it. My cousin, and three years ago, it made us like very distant and mean to each other, and we didn't handle it well. It has been four months since six girls in northern Saskatchewan took their own lives. Trina Wines works with Indigenous youth there and organized this rally. She says the crisis is far from over and kids are still trying to kill themselves. This is almost a daily occurrence to us. We just had to be creative and we just had to say, like, we have to provide an intervention and we're going to do it. Whether the funding is there or not, these kids need us. Corey Soup is Saskatchewan's advocate for youth and children. He's writing a report on suicide in Saskatchewan's north and says it's the kids' stories that matter most. If we don't talk to another adult, I don't care. All we need to do is talk to the youth. And if they say something, they mean it and we need to print it. Many young people say things are starting to change. The kids need to realize that they need to talk to someone. Like, they're not alone in this and that, like, people are going to be here for them. A once taboo subject now openly talked about. Before they leave, everyone at this conference, youth and adults alike, will sign one of these. It's a life pact, the opposite of a suicide pact. It's a promise to protect their lives, watch out for each other, and reach for help if they or anyone they know needs it. Stephanie Skanderis, CBC News, Saskatoon.